Hey there, Nick Dunthakis here. So let's say that you just updated your dev box to Ubuntu 22.04 and life is looking pretty sweet. You moved over all the files, all the permissions are good to go. And when you tried to SSH into a server that you know you have access to, you got a permission denied on your public key. And then you tried again and it was access denied, access denied, access denied, access denied. It was basically that one scene from Lawnmower Man. In case you haven't seen it, here's a five second clip. Access denied. Access denied. Access denied. Yep, and by the way, I watched it recently and whew, man, kinda doesn't hold up, but still worth a laugh. But uh, yeah, so it turns out in Ubuntu 22.04, there is a newer version of OpenSSH, and by default, it will not allow you to use RSA keys anymore. And so uh, in this video, we're gonna go over two ways to get around that. Basically, we are going to go over how to configure OpenSSH client side. By the way, you won't need to change anything on your server to allow being able to connect with older RSA keys. But also we're gonna go over how to generate a newer alg algorithm or you know, basically creating a different type of SSH key using ed2519. And uh, no, I don't know exactly why it's named 2519, but there is a Wikipedia entry here. Basically, there are all these different mathematical properties and uh, yeah, ed2519 is based on this twister, twisted Edwards curve here. Feel free to look into the gory details if you'd like. Uh, all this translates down to is basically generating a new SSH key and then moving it over to your server. And we're gonna go over some of that details in this post here. But uh, uh, I did write this blog post ahead of time and I will leave a link to this one in the description. And we're mainly going to be running a lot of commands together and going over things except for the very start of this because uh, I've already made a whole bunch of different changes to a couple of servers that I own. I've generated new keys. I've got all that stuff set up. And uh, I didn't record that process blind and you know, reverting all of that and going over all of that again on video would be a little bit tedious for me to edit out a million IP addresses and all sorts of other things like that. So I've got a couple details here written out, but uh, yeah, basically like the last two thirds of, of this, we're gonna just do it live on video. But um, anyways, uh, I am updating WSL2 to Ubuntu 22.04. And uh, after a little bit of debugging, I noticed that I was getting this no mutual signature algorithm uh, as an error from SSH when I was trying to get connected. And that was what was giving me that public key denied message here. Um, but yeah, let's say, you know, you just updated your box, blah, blah, blah. You're super sure that all the file permissions and everything are good to go. You know, you try to SSH into whatever server that you have, and then boom, you get this permission denied public key. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely sure that your key works. And uh, if you actually use the same exact key on a different device, like, you know, maybe you have an, uh, your old WSL2 instance running Ubuntu 20, maybe you have a Debian box or, you know, whatever else, uh, things absolutely work. Uh, what you can end up doing to help debug this type of problem is you can SSH into your server, but then just add the V flag here for verbose mode. And that is going to provide a lot of really useful output, um, a lot more than you see here. There's probably going to be whatever, like 60, 70, 100 lines of output there. But near the bottom, you will likely see something like this, where it is going to offer your public key, you know, paths and stuff are going to be different. But uh, yeah, we'll mention what type of key that you had. And previously I had this RSA SHA-256 key. And then boom, you're gonna get that error there. Um, this public key test here, no mutual signature algorithm. And you know, you're not gonna see this information unless you use the V flag there. Uh, I just happened to stumble upon using the V flag because I know usually uh, when it comes to SSH, it's pretty explicit on what went wrong. If you get some type of permission error, you know, not necessarily this specific one, but yeah, there's all sorts of good stuff in, the, in there. Um, but yeah, you know, if you're watching this video, uh, maybe you do have one of these types of keys and you recently got that error. Maybe you're just watching it casually for fun, uh, whatever. But that's basically the scenario here. And, you know, you can check which type of RSA key that you have by running this command here. So I'm going to run that now uh, in a terminal here, uh, paste it in, and then there we go. We can see that it is a SHA-256 version of RSA. You know, there's a little bit of information about the key. And uh, yeah, there's the old key of type RSA. Now, if you got uh, you know a file not found there, that means you don't have an RSA key. You can see it's explicitly in the file name. Maybe you already have an ed uh, 2519 key or maybe something else. But yeah, this is specific to RSA. And uh, yeah, I just know that this key is really, really old because this VB stands for virtual box and you know, way before even WSL one was around, you know, I was using uh, VMware player like many, 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 many years ago. Then eventually I started using virtual box when VM player just started receiving updates. Anyway, long story short, it's like whatever, like eight years ago was when I made this key. So yeah, it's using an older algorithm uh, just because that's what I used back then. And yeah, that's the root of this problem here. So, you know, at some point open SSA drop support for that and we can do a couple of ways to, to solve this one. So option number one is you can actually configure your open SSH client to support RSA. So if you open up this uh, link here to the changelog, I'll leave a link to this one in the description here. Uh, we can see it actually suggests this little snippet here that you can just drop into your SSH config and then you'll be able to connect. So 
that's there for your taking if you want to just snipe that. And, you know, I kind of do suggest that you should probably use both of these options, at least the first one uh, as a temporary solution, because, yeah, uh, this is completely client side, right? You don't need to make any changes on your server at all. All you need to do is, you know, make an update on your DevBox's config file. It's a really good temporary solution. So you can just drop into the SSH config and add that there. So if I jump to here, let's, uh, I don't even have anything installed, by the way, in this 2204 instance. So let's uh, open up this SSH config. Yep, there we go. Yeah, so this is uh, that little snippet of code here. I already put it in there, and that's it. And then, uh, you know, when you, when you don't want this anymore because you've already made a new key, then you can just delete these lines or comment them as well. It's up to you. But uh, yeah, let's quit out that one, and we'll go back to the blog post here. So yeah, the first bullet, right, this uh, configure your client like this, it's pretty appealing, right, because it gives you a way to create a brand new SSH key and then add it to your servers while still supporting the old RSA key, RSA key at the same time. Basically, you won't ever lock yourself out of your server. Although, if you do end up getting locked out because maybe you deleted the wrong uh, key from your authorized keys or whatever, a lot of popular hosting providers do offer some type of VNC connection. So basically, like DigitalOcean, for example, you can just in your browser, connect to your server, and that's not going to necessarily always connect over SSH. It um, opens up like a VNC connection, or maybe they change it. I don't know the gory details, but yeah, uh, other providers also host very similar things. So, you know, as a last resort, if you do get stuck, there is that option there. But yeah, basically the idea is we'll generate a new key, and then you can add that new key to your server's authorized keys file in the home directory of whatever user that you're SSHing in. And then, uh, yeah, you can keep the old key there. And then when you're super confident, 100% sure that everything is good to go with the new key, then you can go back to your server, go to your authorized keys, and then delete the old RSA key there. And uh, if you do that workflow, then you'll be good to go, like you just won't get locked out there. And then, you know, once you do that for a whole bunch of things, because honestly, in my case, I had so many different servers that I have access to. Some of them are mine. Some of them are people who just, you know, uh, my public key is, is there. So those needed to be updated. There's there's quite a lot. Um, but you can continue keeping your old RSA key on your dev box, just basically sitting there idling, not doing anything. There's no real harm in that. But it's nice to keep it around just in case, right? Maybe something pops up three months from now and you're like, damn, like I still need access with my RS key, RSA key to somewhere else. And by the way, don't forget too, like if you're using um, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, etc., you know, chances are you have your key uh, somewhere in your profile. So you want to update that as well. And uh, okay. So let's say though that you do want to make a new key, which by the way, I did as well, uh, uh, totally worth doing. There is one potential decision to make, like, are you going to use ED2519 or this ECD SA1? And look, you know, I haven't read the white papers. I'm not super well versed in low level uh, cryptography, but I did research this a little bit. And it seems like ED2519 uh, has quite a few practical advantages. Um, namely around speed, but also having protection against certain things. And, you know, you can do a little bit more research on that, on that if you like, but chances are, you know, if you're reading this article or watching this video, um, you're probably using RSA, which is wildly less secure than either of the two options above. So you're probably in the same shoes as me, right? Like you just want a well-supported SSE key type that adheres to specifications that very smart people have vetted against uh, the test of time. Also, you know, I'm not going to bring it up on video, but if you go to GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket's official documentation, at least at the time of making this video, they do suggest using ED5519. You know, I kind of don't like blindly just using something because someone else is doing it, but, uh, in this case, I feel pretty good about that decision. And by the way, what's really cool too about this one is, you know, let's say that you have a very, very old server, maybe Debian Jesse, which I forgot the exact release date, 2014, 15, something like that, but it's starting to get pretty crusty. You know, it is past the point of uh, its end of life by a couple of years. It does at least have OpenSSH 6.7, so you can use this new ED5519 key if you are using a very old server. Um, you know, maybe it's a little bit older than Jesse, then probably should be considering updating, even if it's Jesse as well. But anyways, yeah, you can also just check very quickly what version of SSH that you have available on your server by running SSH capital dash V. So I'm on my dev box here anyways, um, you know, but I can still get the output here to see what version of open SSH have. Now, remember, this is me running this on Ubuntu 22.04. So uh, pretty decently, you know, it's a latest stable or LTS release of Ubuntu here. Uh, but yeah, you can just check here to see what that is. You know, if you're using Debian Jesse or the next one, uh, it's going to be a lesser version, but still supported for Ed2519. And yeah, so let's go over generating a new key of that type. So it's actually pretty painless. You just need to make a regular SSH key that you normally would. And then for the comments here, you can put in whatever host or username that you want. This is kind of just an identifier. It's pretty reasonable to put in something like your email there, just so you know who the key is associated to 
when you're looking at it at a glance. So I'm going to go run this one now and uh, yeah, let's just put in, I'll keep you at example.com in there because it's not super important for the sake of this video. Um, but then I already, I already generated my new uh, key here. So I'm actually going to name this one hello because I don't want to overwrite the old one that I have. But in your case, if this is the first time you're generating this type of key, then you'll want to leave this empty. And then when it comes to a passphrase, that's going to be up to you if you want to put one in. Uh, typically for my SSH keys, I find that I do not put passphrases in there just because they tend to be uh, a little bit interruptive when using tools like Ansible and other configuration management tools. But again, this comes down to your preference on you know how secure do you want this to be. You know, I personally am working on a laptop, or sorry, personally working on a workstation, not a laptop, and uh, yeah, it doesn't leave my home office really. And I have other things in place. Like basically, I feel pretty comfortable not needing a passphrase on my SSH key. But that's up to you. You know, if you want to leave it empty, you can just uh, hit enter twice. And then there you go. You have your new key generated. That is going to be in your SSH directory here. And uh, if I do an LS there, we can see that that new key was generated. You know, if you didn't change the name of it, then it's going to be generated just like this. And you know, we can go and cut that out, uh, the public key specifically. You definitely don't want to share the non-public one to anyone. Uh, if you do that, then your key is basically compromised. But yeah, uh, the public key is totally fine. That's meant to be shared. You know, it's what you would put up on on GitHub or you know wherever it's going to be shared. Uh, especially, it's also going to be on your remote server because that's this is the thing that's going to be in the authorized keys file. But you can see at the end there, you know, that little bit of identifier, kind of nice just to let you know, you know, who this key belongs to because that doesn't really say much about that. <laughs> but we can also see the algorithm being used here. You know, for an older key that is going to um, show using RSA. So actually, I can show you that real quick here. If I look at my old uh, RSA key here and cut out the public key, then we can see that uh, it is RSA there. And there it is from the blog post, the old good old Nick VB host name there. But uh, yeah, cool. Okay. So that's that. We now have a new key. So now you can actually take this public key, the one that we just looked at, this one, by the way, and you can just drop that into your server's authorized keys file. Now, you know, I don't have a server set up here to do that, but uh, you could technically just make an authorized keys file in your SSH directory, put this key in there, and uh, well, you know, it's not going to really make sense to do that on the same machine that you're on, but you know, that is how you're able to SSH into another server using the key. So the basic idea there is, you know, your server says, hey, by the way, like, what are some authorized keys that can connect? And then the idea there is you put your public key in there, and then uh, when you connect from your dev box, let's say, that's going to have both the private key, sorry, this one, not the RSA one. It's going to have both the private key and the public key, and it's going to send the public key over, and they're going to match, and then you're going to be allowed access, and life is going to be good. Um, yeah, so by the way, you know, if you changed your config file earlier, you know, we looked at this little snippet here. If you did this, uh, then you'll want to, you know, comment out those lines or just remove them completely, you know, once you're sure that it works. And, you know, you should be able to connect there. And uh, you can actually connect with the V flag, just like we did before when we tried to debug the error. But uh, this time, instead of seeing that one error around the like unsupported algorithm, whatever it was, you know, uh, this one over here, no mutual signature algorithm, then instead what you end up getting is, uh, yeah, you're going to offer your Edtivity 519. The server is going to accept that. And then you're going to be authenticated to, you know, whatever your server happens to be using that public key. And then you are all set and you're good to go. There's nothing else in the post here to do timestamps for me later. But yeah, that's it for this one. So um, yeah, I would imagine if you just updated to Ubuntu 2204 and you were using an older key, then you're going to come into this type of error. Hopefully you find this video or a blog post or whatever, and uh, that's going to be it for this one. So let me know in the comments below if you've chosen to use the Ed2519 or the other key, or if you ran into this issue or yeah, anything like that. Also, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help a lot. And I will see you in the next video.